Hello everyone, this is Jason with For Geek Sakes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a server for a virtual environment. I'm going to be loading VMware EXXi on a HP DL360 Generation 6. And it's very simple to do, so those of you who are may be a little intimidated by servers, please don't be. It's really simple, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, this method works for all HP servers, anything from Generation 4 all the way up to the latest generation. Now, if you have a different manufacturer server like a Dell, your steps may be a little bit different, but the things you have to enable to get virtual virtualization working will be exactly the same. So still follow along with these steps if you're planning on setting up a virtual environment using VMware EXXi. If you've been in IT long enough and been dealing with Windows, you know when you have a blue screen at startup or the blue screen disappears, that we call it the blue screen of death. Because that generally means something very bad has happened and you need to take immediate action to resolve the issue before systems continue to work. So in VMware, that is exactly the same, but it's a pink screen. So, yeah, we call it the pink screen of death. And anytime you see the screen, that means something has failed and you need to take immediate action. So, upon installation, I pulled the, uh, well, first of all, I just grabbed the server off of my shelf and I was going to load it up with VMware EXXi to do a lab. And I had no idea who used it last or what it was used for, but I just, Took it off the shelf, hooked it up, plugged in my USB drive to load VMware EXXi, and shortly after the install, I got a pink error that says VMware EXI requires the execute disable slash no execute CPU feature to be enabled. And basically what that tells me is I need to make a change in my system BIOS. So if you get this error, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to correct it. So as soon as you power on your machine, begin to press the F8 key repeatedly until you get to the ILO settings page. Now we're not doing anything in ILO. ILO is the HP remote management interface, um, but I found if you press F8, as soon as it comes on, it's gonna take you in the ILO interface. Then at that point, you just navigate down to the exit to get out of the ILO interface and then begin to press F8 again. It will immediately take you into the logical drive. Inside of the logical drive, you can verify or create logical drives for hard drive space. So if you have two 80 gig hard drives, you can create a logical drive that will combine them together to create 160 gig and so forth. Now it's not necessary to do anything fancy, any kind of special RAID array to um, practice redundancy and stuff. We're just trying to get a lab up and running in order to learn voice. So if, but if that's something you're into, you know, play around with a different RAID arrays and different types of way to create redundancy or just ways to set up your hard drive but for me i just use the basic raid zero because i want to maximize the most hard i want to maximize all the hard drive space i have and in this particular server i think i did have 280 no i can't remember what i had but basically i combined them all together to give me the most amount of um, hard drive space as possible Okay, now the very next thing we're going to do before we start the install is go into the BIOS and enable the two features that's going to allow virtualization. And what I'm doing now is I've begun to press the F9 key. And again, this is an HP server, so to get into your BIOS on a different manufacturer server may be a different key press. But again, the features in Things you have to enable are exactly the same. And I'm just continually, continuously tapping the F9 key. So once I'm inside of the BIOS, I'm going to go down to Advanced Options, Processor Options, and then I'm going to enable the non-exec memory. It needs to be enabled. And also the one right below it, the Intel virtualization technology needs to be enabled. And then I'm going to hit the escape key and press F10 to go back out and save my changes. 
After that, we're now ready to load our VMware software. So I'm just gonna let this whole process run through. I have um, cut some of the stuff out just to save time, but uh, I'm just gonna run it out just so you guys can see how it's done. I will do some voiceover at some point, probably to point out a few things, but for the most part, I'm just gonna let it ride. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Make sure you assign a static IP address to your virtual server. That way you won't ever have to worry about it changing on you via DHCP. And also, once you finish the completion of this process, you'll need to actually open up a web browser and browse to the IP address that you give the server so that you can download the client software that installs on your PC. From there, you'll be able to remotely manage the server and add files and create virtual machines.